climate change is happening. We hear so much about it. Every day, it seems like we report more evidence of climate change. More floods and hurricanes are headed to the coast and will make land... Farmers don't know whether to anticipate dry or wet conditions this year. But it still seems so distant. Who is it affecting and what can we do about it? From the Gulf Coast of the United States to Southern Ethiopia, from the rice fields of Vietnam to the villages of El Salvador, it's the poorest people who live on the front lines of climate change. Water, whether too much or too little, is often the heart of the problem. In El Salvador, erratic rainfall and floods threaten the water supply. During the wet season, it rains day and night day and night. The rivers swell, then the water gets contaminated. So what generally happens here is that when it floods, the water gets extremely contaminated. The trains overflow. This is an area with a lot of cattle. All of that waste goes into the hand dug wells that are found in most of the homes here. I get our drinking water from a hand dug well. We use this water to clean the dishes, cook and drink. When it rains, a lot of the water comes out muddy. But because we do not have other options, this is the water that we drink. In many of the coastal communities of Louisiana, climate change means more severe hurricanes and floods and increased erosion. The last hurricane that passed through here had seven foot of water. You know, so all, everybody's house gets flooded every, every year, two years, and then it's wood. It can only take so much water, and it's going to start to rot. My name is Betty Jane Adams. I'm from Chauvin, Louisiana. Rita and Katrina was what destroyed my house. Must have been about maybe four and a half to five foot of water you can sit in that house. When I was younger, the water used to come, and it would go down right away. Floods are more frequent now. In Vietnam, farmers face climate change-related droughts threatening their crops and livestock. My husband and I have a rice field, but we do not get much from it. We have five months of dry season and just two to three months of rainy season. Sometimes it rains too much, sometimes it rains too little. After the drought, our family lost two and a half acres of corn and two and a half acres of rice. We lost two cows. People didn't have fresh water, so we had to take the water from the stream, which is a little more than a half mile walk from here. The quality of the water was bad. It caused skin diseases and stomach illnesses. In Ethiopia, climate change can bring unpredictable weather and more frequent and severe droughts. In the last major rainy season, this area received rain only for five days. So the ponds are not storing enough water, not enough pasture is growing, and the crops are failing. If the natural resource is not doing good, the livestock cannot survive. And if the livestock cannot do good, the people cannot survive. During the dry season, it takes six hours a day to gather water. Over the years, rainfall has decreased. As communities struggle with a changing climate, they're developing new techniques and rediscovering old techniques to help them adapt. In El Salvador, communities are building healthy wells with help from a local organization named Provida. They're located in the heart of the community so everybody has access. 
the proposal of these healthy wells is to build a sealed well that not only gives them higher quality water all year round, but in the case of flooding, which is happening more and more as we're seeing changes in the climate, this is going to provide a safe water source during emergencies and throughout the year. We all have the right to water. But not to the bad water we used to drink. Quality water. Water that helps us stay healthy. We have learned how to clean the wells inside, how to put chlorine in the water. On the Gulf Coast of the United States, a community organization, TRAC, is helping residents on Louisiana's bayous build hurricane-resistant homes. Elevating houses is not a new idea. It's been done for centuries in Asia and coastal communities in the U.S., but TRAC is using a new design that they created in collaboration with MIT students. My name is Peggy Case, and I'm the director of TRAC. What you're going to see down here, you know, every style, shape of houses being up in the air, it is the evolution of living here. It's been a goal of TRAC's to build back better and to build back for the last time. The lift houses that we're building can sustain Cat 5 hurricanes by creating sustainable housing. The next generation will inherit them. In Vietnam, poor communities are accustomed to dealing with floods. But the Rakhle people, an ethnic minority, find droughts to be the real problem. They're working to adapt to the harsher growing conditions. They're learning how to cultivate crops and raise animals that can survive dry spells. And, with the help of the government, they're working to bring more clean water to their communities. When this reservoir is completed, we can be in more control, increasing the water for irrigation when it is needed, or reducing it when it is not. When this reservoir is completed, it will ensure people's survival. In our community, women are the first to feel the effect of drought. They know best about problems in the home, with children and the cattle. One new strategy this community in Ethiopia has undertaken is a drought early warning system called DOES that helps turn the deep knowledge women have of their communities into action. It's a partnership between villagers and a local group called the Gayo Pastoralist Development Initiative. My name is Sarafo Bagajo. I'm a data collector. Every month, I come to this area and collect data from five women and report that to Gayo. My questionnaire has 25 questions on sanitation, clean water, food, livestock, and pasture, as well as health. That information gets plotted on a graph, and when spikes reveal trouble, that triggers action. The community is key to identifying solutions. They include deepening and repairing ponds so they'll hold more water, and distributing drought-tolerant goats to help families rebuild their herds. Around the world, it's the poorest and most vulnerable people who are hit hardest by climate change. But poor communities are fighting back, and you can help. If you're asking me what I wish, it's to get enough rain and grass and pasture. I wish to become self-sufficient. Join the world's poorest people in their fight against climate change.